r slash ask reddit by ready reddit teachers of reddit what are your stories of oh god this child is a sociopath <laughs> don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel enjoy the video <laughs> i have seen students display all sorts of extreme behavior over the past 20 years teaching teenagers in challenging schools the one kid that i was convinced was a psychopath just quietly refused to do anything he didn't want to do i never saw him angry and yet i did see him hit people and say awful things to them he was always eerily calm he was tiny and very cute but he used to manipulate people and watch chaos unfold with these huge unblinking puppy dog guys it was like he was carrying out an experiment anyway that was when he was about 14. He's 19 now, and serving a life sentence for a horrific gang murder. Last line caught me off guard, but I should have seen something like that coming. So I'm not entirely sure if this is sociopath or psychopath, but I had a child that was creepily into my pregnancy for the first 7 months. He wanted to name her, talk to my belly, etc. Then one day it clicked that I would leave, and he got really close to me and whispered, when you come out, I'm going to kill you with a hammer. I hate you. I was shocked, so I took him with me to the office. The LSSP asked why he said that. He replied that it will take her away. I want it to die, so she stays here. He was on a lot of medication for his incredibly violent tendencies. He had tried to kill his sister before by pushing her in front of a bus. His mother kept him locked in his room at night, because she had found him standing over her with a knife. Edit, the child was a male 10 years old. His mother agreed to have him committed, after he attempted to kill a police support dog using a pair of scissors. MHMR and CPS were both involved. I haven't seen, or heard from the family, since I left the district. I was often substituting a special needs class, 6 to 7 boys about 8 to 10 years old. The days were normally lively, but I always had everything under control, and the boys had learned to trust me, and at least tried to do what I told them to. Never had any real problems, just normal stuff. Then one time there was a new boy in the class. Their teacher had written me a note that said to keep a close eye on him at all times. He had the telltale features of a fast child and small black eyes like a shark. He never showed any emotion whatsoever excluding immense excitement if someone else got hurt in any way. Few days passed without any incidents and then, out of the blue he stands up in the middle of class, yanks the much smaller guy sitting in front of him down with his chair from behind, and starts to pummel him in the face with his fists. I ran to intervene, and grabbed him off, and set him in a corner ordering one of the trustworthy boys to run, and get the principal here, now. The attacker stood in the corner, emotionless as ever and completely calm. I turned to check out the crying kid on the floor and miraculously he seemed unharmed, but was just shaken uo by the surprise attack. I sat down on the floor to calm him down, and to help him up. Next thing I know, is a shark eye kid standing beside me, and stabbing me on the leg with my teacher scissors, the only pointy ones in the classroom. It was then, when I realized why the attacked kid wasn't badly hurt. Shark Eye was big for his age, but he had no physical strength at all. I didn't even get a bruise from his stab, my trusty Lee's jeans stopped the blade which I instantly took from him. I threw the scissors on top of a high shelf, and ordered everyone else out of the classroom, to wait for the principal's arrival, while I watched over Shark Eye. Boys ran out, Shark Eye looked at me curiously for a few seconds, and sat down at his desk, and continued his math assignments like nothing had happened. I asked him quite sternly what had made him attack a fellow student. Shark I lifted his empty gaze and said I heard him laughing at the school cafeteria. I thought he could have been laughing at me. Lore and all, can we play football today in PE class? The boy had no empathy nor remorse. The episode meant absolutely nothing to him. When the principal arrived we went through the situation and the class affirmed my description or events as they had happened. Shark Eye's mom picked him up early, and he stayed at home for a few days. The principal told me that this was not the first such incident, and that the boy was on cue for a hospital school class. The principal commended me for my actions, I was very young at the time, and was surprised that I had been able to keep my cool even after getting stabbed, even if the attempt had been pitiful. Turned out that's my teacher superpower. I never lose it.
even when I've been spit at, got chairs thrown at me, someone trying to gouge my eyes out while holding them, more than once, etc. Luckily the years in the same school have accumulated my reputation and nowadays it's very rare that someone even dares to try to mess with me. This incident was nearly 20 years ago, but I'll never forget it. This one happened just the other day, and, obviously, I'm going to be anonymous about it to protect the child's identity. Let's call her Abby. So, I'm driving a minibus of students home from a basketball practice when suddenly Abby starts screaming, Did that have peanuts in it? I'm allergic to peanuts. She begins hyperventilating and crying, and actually makes me pull over, so she can get off the bus and throw up. We are about 15 minutes from the school, and I'm literally having a panic attack. So, I call the principal, and ask what should I do. Do we have an EP pen on hand at the school, ECT? She seems confused, and puts Abby's grandmother on, who tells me she wasn't aware her granddaughter, who is claiming she can barely breathe, had any allergies. When we got back to the school I was about ready to faint and the principal brings out a registration paperwork to show me, no listed allergies. She isn't allergic to anything, it was all an act. The hyperventilating, the crying, even the throwing up, was all for attention. Edit, spelling. Abby is going to pull this stunt one day and someone who's been waiting for their moment to use their training, is going to slam an epipen into her. Wonder if she'll learn then. Or she's going to end up with a whopping great ER bill from a fake illness. For what it's worth, I'm actually a teacher, but I was babysitting in this case. I was asked to babysit a 9 year old girl and a 3 year old boy a few weekends ago. I'd never met the kids, but I figured the 9 year old, and I will just hang out with a mutual understanding, that she doesn't need me there, and the 3 year old might need some redirection, and to just be kept occupied. Boy was I ducking wrong. The 9 year old was a straight up manipulative bully. She gave the boy jobs to do when playing play doc and then tore him up telling him how bad he was at every job she gave him. She chased him around the house with a sharpened pencil. She roughhoused with him until he got hurt and ran upstairs crying and then she chased after him laughing going, or I'm really sorry. She stole the TV remote out of my hand and hid it when I tried to find a movie to put on. She tried to tell me that his bedtime wasn't actually when the kid's mom told me it was and got him up to play trucks. Then when I was finally getting him to go to sleep with a story, she came in the room and told me that it was way past his bedtime and he's not allowed any more books. I'd never met a child so starved for control, but I really question where this is coming from because one. I gave her nothing to push back against. If she was being controlling because I was treating her like a child, I would have understood, but I wasn't and too. It was clear her parents weren't extremely strict with her on a normal basis. Anyway, my first clue should have been when the parents offered me a higher pay per hour than I asked for. Even with the chance to make $100 in one night, I'm never going back. Poor little boy. He was so sweet too. Well mannered, told me how much he liked playing with me after I had only been there for an hour. I really hope he grows up to be okay. A first grader, Madison made up name is made up, pushed a friend off of a high stool in the art room because the other girl wouldn't share her crayon, immediately give up the crayon, even though she was in the middle of using it. The friend wasn't badly hurt, but said she didn't want to sit with Madison anymore, so I said okay and moved her. Madison burst into tears and told me that I had to force the other girl to sit with her, that it wasn't fair, that I told the other girl that she didn't have to share, that it wasn't fair, that I told the other girl that she didn't have to be friends with Madison if Madison was hurting her and making her feel bad and how unfair it was that the other girl had fallen off the stool just to make Madison look bad. I just can't even with Madison. Literally nothing is ever her fault. If she steals something, it's the other student's fault for giving it to her then lying about doing so. I've seen kids actually doubt themselves about whether they've given Madison their things, even though I watched her steal it. This girl is 6 and has gaslighting down to a science. 7 year old knew that if the little kids put toys in their mouths, we'd wash and sanitize them diligently. When this kid got mad, he'd go over to the Lego bin and slowly spit one fat logie into it before mixing up all the pieces. 
he'd then spend the rest of the day reveling in the knowledge that some poor teacher would have to wash and dry 5,000 pieces of Lego. Thank you for watching Ready Reddit. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more r slash ask Reddit videos. Share your stories in the comment section below.